Tonight, State Senate candidate Russell Ruderman, but first, the philosophy of liberty. Governor Romney and I, we both agree. We agree. We ought to bring the tax rates down. I felt the same as the president did. Governor Romney, I'm glad that uh, you agree. But let's come back to something the president and I agree on. Can the two of you agree that the voters have a choice between Absolutely. the two of you? Wondering who to vote for when Romney and Obama agree on so many things? Remember, you do have other options come November 6th. Tune in to see the second round of debates between the major third-party candidates on October 30th.
America today is no longer the land of the free and the home of the brave. It is the land of government spying, snooping, and scrutinizing American citizens without their knowledge. It is a land where you can be arrested without charges and detained indefinitely without a phone call or a trial. This is the land Republicans and Democrats built. The America of Barack Obama and the America of Mitt Romney. The people now running America have a different idea of freedom than the people who founded it. Gary Johnson wants a different America. He wants an America without the wars, the taxes, the spending, the lousy economy, the joblessness, and failed programs like the war on drugs. Gary Johnson wants what we all want. He wants our America back. If you think Gary Johnson is dreaming for thinking we can live in peace, prosperity, and freedom again, Gary Johnson says, dream a little. My name is Gary Johnson. Be libertarian with me for one election. Live free. Aloha mai kako. You are watching Hawaii Political Reporter. With me now is Russell Ruderman. Russell is running for Hawaii State Senate District 2 for the Big Island. We very much appreciate you being here, Russell. Thank you. And I was wondering if you could please tell us about your background as it relates to your qualifications for office and ability to represent your district. Okay, thank you. Well, I have a degree in biology from Penn State. And uh, after college, I got into the uh, natural foods industry, which turned into a career for me. And about 15 years ago, I started Island Naturals Markets, which has grown into a group of four natural foods markets around the Big Island. I now have about 150 employees, which I'm extremely proud of. Uh, it's, it's private sector jobs. We, uh, I feel like they're jobs that benefit our community. We really promote local foods. Besides our direct employees, we support dozens of farmers and food producers around the state. Along the way, I've also been active in uh, a lot of different community issues that have come up along the way, mostly environmental issues. Um, and along the way, I've been uh, invited and appointed to serve on several county commissions, including the Solid Waste Management Committee, the Agriculture Committee, and the County's en uh, Environmental Management Committee, which I still serve on. I also serve on the UHH Performing Arts Center Advisory Committee. So I've been involved in community issues um, as a private citizen as well as as the owner of Island Naturals Market. You know, that's really, really quite a lot. And i, I got to tell you something. I really I want to shake your hand right now because one of my personal things, okay, is that I believe so few people in government have any knowledge of science, much less a degree, okay? <laughs> I mean, numbers and any kind of science, it is so weak. Just to get a man who knows a person, okay, who knows science, can quantify numbers, and, and actually has a basis of understanding these complex technological issues is incredibly advantageous. I'm just curious, well, what so. were you doing with the biology? What was your purpose there? Or, you know, I, you... at the time, kind of thought I was going to be a doctor. and mm -hmm. I, uh, But I also, I'm sort of a scientist by nature, and biology was the was the you know um, major that gave me the most freedom to pursue my various interests along the it's way. It's well. tremendously valuable. There's a customer of mine. He's a, actually one of the top teachers for science and biology of the other. He's like a master teacher, and it is so necessary. And educationally and functionally, when you legislate, that's got to give you a tremendous advantage. And especially with now, it kind of all makes sense to me. You know, the the bulb lights up that what you're <laughs> doing and why it's a natural for you all, all the way through, okay? Oh, so when you get to these issues with GMO and food and jobs, I think you're going to have some advantage there. Now, you had mentioned a lot, you know, as far as what you've done with the Island Naturals, which I think most people know, there's four stores on the island, right? We have four stores around the island, that's right. Hilo, Pahoa, Kailua Kona, and Kealakekua. You know, we could just stop there and say, well, you know, you've made the, the, the business, you've done the jobs, you've contributed to the economy. But for a lot of people who may not have actually done this, maybe just for a minute or two, could you give them a little bit of the nuts and bolts of what that was? But was that easy? <laughs> well, no, it's never, it's not easy. The first couple of years of most businesses are, are very challenging, I think. Um, and then we also 
survived the 2008-2009 recession. So we had two periods of time that were tremendously challenging. The first two years and then two years starting in 2008, which happened to be right after we expanded to Kona. So we had a major expansion into a tourist economy right when the recession occurred, and that was an extremely challenging time. And the first couple of years were difficult, too, because, you know, you start a business, usually you're very idealistic about it, and you think, oh, well, this is going to work just perfectly, and you don't, at least for myself, I tend to underestimate what expenses are going to be and underestimate what the challenges will be. So we had to make some adjustments, you know, in years two and three to, to deal with the reality and the finances of running an independent business. I've been really fortunate in the, in the process of Island Naturals growing up as a business to, that we've attracted a lot of wonderful, talented, like-minded people who have become my partners, really, in helping the business grow. To me, there's sort of two uh, basic theories of human relationships. One is dominance and hierarchy, and the other model is partnerships. And I really cherish partnerships. I really like to create situations where everyone involved wins and everyone involved is working towards the same goal for their mutual benefit. That's the reason for the success of Island Naturals, is that we have a lot of people all working for the same goals and enjoying it. And we're providing a real benefit, I think, to the community. That allows us to feel good about the work that we do and allows us to have tremendous uh, um, welcome and, and good impressions in the community about us. So Russell, you mentioned the word vision. Vision is another one of my hot button words like you know science and biology. Now, you mentioned that you said you had the common vision for the health food store. I'm wondering, does that apply? You know, that, what was that vision, if you wouldn't mind telling us? And does that apply to what you're trying to do now? And could you also maybe give us a vision of what your district could be with the policies and the things that you'd like to pursue? Okay. Well, the vision that I had in starting Island Naturals was to create a place where, you know, the community could get really good, healthy food that was really a part of the community. The, the, the people we buy food from, the people we sell food to, the people who work there. Our goal was to create a place that's fun to be, fun to work at, fun to shop at, and we're also doing some good in the world because we're supporting local food, we're supporting organic farmers, we're providing uh, cleaner, healthier food to people and labeling it with integrity. I think those are all things that the food industry needs to get back to. and. So that's a big part of what I wanted to do. Another really core part of it for me was to create a place that was fun to work. I think we all have to work, and it's very important to me to be able to enjoy your time at work. And I can't enjoy my time at work unless my employees are also. So we needed to create a place that was fun to work and therefore fun for people to shop at. But along the way, it's very important to me to do some good in the world, to do some benefit for the community and not do harm to the community or our environment. And that's one of the things I love about the natural foods industry because it is, at its heart, dedicated to those kind of principles. And I think that relates well to some of the things I'd like to accomplish in the legislature in terms of what Puna and Ka'u can be and can grow into uh, being better examples of than we are. I really think we have tremendous potential in Pune and Ka'u to become uh, the food producing bread basket of our state. And the, and the reason I like that idea is because we need to stop importing so much food. We need to produce more food locally. We need those jobs. We need to reduce our carbon footprint by shipping less stuff in. So all those things work together. All those problems can um, get solved. Along the way, I think that we that we can become an example for the rest of the state and even the rest of the country in how to have a sustainable society. We really have all the resources that we need here in Hawaii if we were to use them properly to have a, a self-sustaining, clean, clean environment and a self-sustaining community and economy. I think uh, some of the parts of that besides agriculture and food production also it has to include solar energy. We need clean, safe, renewable energy. We're blessed with so much solar energy in Hawaii that we should really maximize that. And you know, we need to address some of the nuts and bolts issues in our community, like transportation, education, and healthcare in particular, 
but my vision is that what Pune and Kau have are affordable land, we have rain and sunshine in proportions that most of the world would give anything for, and we have an available workforce, and we have a great need for local food. Local food a, is a big issue everywhere, but it's, it's certainly more of an issue to Hawaii than it is to most places, because when we do import food, we import it from thousands of miles away at great expense and at a great carbon footprint. We can solve all of those things by producing more food here, uh, as well as keep those dollars here in the state and here in our community. It seems foolish to me to be paying someone in California or Iowa to make crackers or chips or, or anything and then put it in a box and ship it to Hawaii when we could be making it here and have the job here, have the fresher food, have the lower carbon footprint. It's all benefits. And I think with the increase in shipping costs and the increased concern about global warming, I think the need to get serious about local food is really here for us here in Hawaii. You know, I think you've given us a lot in there. And I'm going to follow up with a couple things on that, which I think are relevant. You know, one thing you haven't gone into, you've gone into the economic benefit of it. But with what may be coming in, just to step aside for a second, myself, I'm very neutral on the anthropogenic global warming. I studied it extensively, and I think there's some basis, certainly for localized. But at any rate, a lot of people don't know, and this points back to what you're saying, that when you think you're using your energy, let's say your Helco and your car, and let's say your automobile fuel consumption, you need to multiply it by three because of the stuff that's coming in, the stuff that's refrigerated, and the lights on the street, et cetera, our energy footprint is actually three times what you initially think it is. Okay, and the food is definitely a large part of it, and that is a gigantic problem, which we I would like to do, and I, I don't want to put you on the spot here, because transportation, and I am in the solar and alternative energy business, and transportation and fixed applications are very different. It's a, one's much more readily doable than the other. But what you're trying to do by reducing the imports would help us tremendously, and it would put it in here. And I wanted to follow up along that line, Russell. Yes, everything you're mentioning is, is definitely true, doable, and I think also could aid us not only economically but in an actual crisis, which could come for many ways. Because one thing that a lot of people aren't on top of, and this is an extremely sensitive issue that I've come across, actually, in, especially inside the Democratic Party, is the shipping. Okay, to hear it's it's extremely sensitive, but you know there's a lot of distress in the shipping industry in general around the world now, and there's incredibly low volumes, and a lot of people don't know that probably the majority of the ships of the world now are actually sitting docked. It's a it's a gigantic problem. So we may have and we have had supply interruptions, hmm. and what you're trying to do for many ways just makes all the more sense for us. And not only just for us, but for the rest of the islands, too. You know, a lot of people like to paint a uh, sort of doomsday scenario of what happens if the ships start, stop coming, you know, and what will we do then. And yes, that kind of thing could happen. But even without uh, anything that dramatic, we still are facing a situation where shipping costs are rising all the time, and they're never going to go back down, in my opinion. So the things that were economical to import quite recently and up until now, are quickly going to become uneconomical to import. I think we're near the end of the era of shipping, you know, um, unessential food items around the world. I think we're not going to be doing that in the next few years. Um, just this week, we had an announcement that impacts the Big Island, where United Airlines is going to stop bringing its big jets to directly to the Big Island, which means that our air cargo freight is no longer available. We used to air freight a lot of products in, certain dairies, certain delicate produce items. And that's actually going away. This is news we just got in the last few days. So, and this is going to occur with more and more aspects of our shipping where it's no longer available or no longer affordable. So it's crucial for us to grow more and more items here. I think that uh, we really will see that change very, very quickly here. And a lot of times when I think about what gets shipped here at great expense and at great energy usage, mostly we're shipping air and water to the Big Island, which, you know, it's just crazy. When you look at a box of, you know, rice cakes or crackers or chips or popcorn or, or even juice, um, mostly what that's, con 
what that contains is water and air. And it's just crazy to keep shipping that into Hawaii. We need to import the raw ingredients if they can't be grown here, and grow as much of the raw ingredients as we can, and then the, do the production here. So we have the jobs here, and we, ha and we ha lower our dependence on fossil fuels and, and shipping. So that's an economic benefit because we're not exporting so much money for fuel costs, and we're not exporting so much to pay other people to manufacture food in other states. And of course, the energy use goes way down when you shift to local foods. And whether you're concerned about global warming or simply diminishing oil supplies or the environmental hazards of using fossil fuels, it's in all those reasons, it's a benefit to reduce our use of fossil fuels. Wow. <laughs> that's a lot, Russell. I mean, that's, that's really quite a lot. But my question to you, and let's see, and I think you're going to surprise us on the positive side here. Can you give us some specifics? Okay, because I know a lot of politicians talk about things in vague generalities, but how about some specifics? How can we do this? Who would do it? Well, you're right. It's much easier to talk in generalities than specifics. But I do have some specifics to offer. And in fact, I think that my business experience is ironic, or by some cosmic coincidence, exactly what's needed to, to move us forward in this regard. Because what I've learned to do is create jobs in the food industry. And I've learned a lot about what works and what doesn't work. Um, I have some specific proposals for uh, promoting particularly local food and agriculture in Puna and Ka'u. One of them is an idea called a business incubator. It's not a new idea. It's been done elsewhere. But we don't have any in Puna or Ka'u that I'm aware of. And what that would be is uh, a community-based resource. Usually it's a facility that has a commercial kitchen, a uh, computer center, and some mentoring. So that someone who has a food product that they'd like to make or that they grow and want to process or package, they can take an idea that they have and turn it into a real business with a little bit of help along the way. By that I mean almost every week someone comes to me at Island Naturals and says, I've got this great product. I grow it or I make it, but I, I want to take it, make it legal. I want to make it a small business and hire people, but I don't know how to get over the hurdle. A lot of times that hurdle is simply the lack of availability of a commercial kitchen. Oftentimes there's other hurdles that the person may not be aware of, but in many cases, it's a really good idea that Hawaii could really use that food product. So I envision a network of business incubators in Pune, Ka'u, and other rural areas of our state that have agricultural potential so that we can help people learn how to become a legal business, learn how to get a legal label, learn how to satisfy Department of Health requirements, and become a new small business. Most job growth in our country comes from new small businesses or growing small businesses. Another advantage of this is once we've helped someone become such a business, they are then developing private sector permanent jobs. They're what I call smart jobs. They're, they, they last indefinitely. They're jobs someone can feel good about because they're serving the community. We're not harming anybody. And they're in the agriculture and food production business. And I'm not only talking about agricultural products that we can grow. I'm talking about value-added food production. Uh, an example might be baking bread. You know, we, we can bake bread here instead of shipping it in. We can uh, pop popcorn here instead of shipping it in, even though we're not going to grow the wheat or the corn here. We still ought to make the product here. We have tremendous potential. You know, there, there's so much potential for us to become a truly vibrant and sustainable community that can be example to the world. I'm very excited to be a part of it all, and um, I feel like I have a role to play in this regard. You know, all my life I've been an environmentalist. That's really my core my core motivating um, concern. That's my real reason for being involved in politics. But along the way in my life, uh, somehow through a strange twist of fate, I've become a successful business person too. So I feel like I have something to offer because I think we all realize that we need economic growth, but we can't sacrifice our environment along the way. And that's really what my entire career has been about and what my entire uh, public service life will be about. 
that we can have economic growth and a safe, healthy, sustainable environment. In fact, we have to make sure to do both. I feel like I've been fairly well prepared for this in my business life. And in terms of my core beliefs, I really care about the environment and want to preserve what's left of nature and keep our wonderful, vibrant, rural Puna and Ka'u community healthy and beautiful. Thanks again. And uh, we can say about Puna, I think almost everybody agree, never boring and never quite conventional. We hope we can say that's the same for our show. Thanks again for watching. Aloha. Aloha. There's no more federal than Federal Express. Ba 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 ba. You try a hide on, you show a freedom ma. You seek agenda, we know you know you anti American. You come poverty American Constitution. 1913, corrupt in the system. Devalue dollar, hyperinflation. The Federal Reserve, controlled by Lucifer. <laughs> he can't see you lying.